Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. I love whores. I love everything about them. How willing they are to sell their souls for money, and how cheerful they can be in the process. Oh, I I'm not talking about the people that sell their bodies. No, no, no. I'm talking about media whores. The people who create stories and ideas solely for the purpose of selling their product. And in the late 80s, early 90s, there's no better brothel for media whores than Nintendo. Now before you go nuts, I love Nintendo. Who doesn't? It's like the greatest gaming company in the world. But that doesn't mean they didn't sell out time after time when it came to their spin-off products. Mostly in television and movie development. Time after time, Nintendo has put out horribly written and horribly executed shows and films that have no interest in actually entertaining the viewer, but rather just selling more Nintendo games and accessories. And here's another one! Captain N, the Game Master. Ah yes, Captain N, the Game Master. The Saturday morning TV show that instantly made you want to play more Nintendo games. Why? Because anything was better than watching this piss-poor putrid pile of pixelated pig shit! So get out your Nintendo blasters and game pads! We're gonna take a look at Captain N. So let's take a look at the story of this show. It seems everything takes place in a fictional realm called Videoland. Welcome to Videoland! Mega High! <laughs> yes, I imagine you'd have to be in order to watch this. It turns out the Palace of Power is under attack by evil forces carrying evil pizza cutters. I would insert that OBO sound effect here, but I don't need to. They already put it in. OBO. I do love it when the show makes the jokes for me. So the evil forces are led by King Hippo from the game Punch-Out, Eggplant Wizard from Kid Icarus, and Mother Brain from Metroid. It won't be long before I, beautiful goddess that I am! Good god, it's like if my mucus became a drag queen. <laughs> by the way, tell me if that sassy voice sounds familiar. Then I'll be the beautiful queen of video land! Does this look inanimate to you, punk? That's right, it's the plan from Little Shop of Horrors. I guess he's just always playing genderly ambiguous monsters with no feet. One human alone could never beat me! <laughs> so this is what would happen if you crossed Joan Rivers with Tina Turner. That's right! Meanwhile, inside the Palace of Power, we see the other video game characters try to protect the palace, like Mega Man. A pleasure to serve you, your worship! You get a low score for this if Kid Icarus trusts you! I trust you! It's like if Popeye smoked an entire Marlboro factory! Kid Icarus, who would later be known in the gaming world as Pit. She's very much Upsedicus! My arrows will stop that Apicus Maximus! Speaking of her Heidicus! Yeah, you probably caught on that his funny thing is saying Icus at the end of words. In fucking genius. If someone is a Dorcus, you can count on me, Princessicus, you big Apicus! My testicles haven't dropped a kiss. And Simon Belmont from the Castlevania games. Mega Man, shine my boots. Kid Icarus, I could use a little trim. Not too much off the top. Oh, Simon, what have they done to you? I know. They took this cool badass of a superhero and turned him into a foppy, egotistical gay wad! I am the handsomest, so I must find the princess and kiss her. It's like if Bruce Campbell's chin never stopped growing. Ew, slime! I mean, where did they even get the idea to gay him up so much? I mean, the original hero has long hair, wears leather, carries a whip, jumps around in a skirt. I think I just answered my own question. Let a real man show you how it's done. The ruler of the Palace of Power is Princess Lana. Oh yeah, from the game... 80s Fashion Vomit? Okay, so Lana was never actually a video game character, they just made her up. You may have helped me win the battle, but the war is far from over. And like a lot of these shows, I gotta ask again, why the hell isn't she a queen? I mean, I know younger girls associate princesses with youth and beauty, but come on. If there's no one else there to rule, you're a goddamn queen! It is I who should apologize to you. But, just like a lot of other shows I've reviewed, they get to keep their cute little title because the king is still technically alive, but just not around. I've tried to lead our people since you disappeared. But I failed you. I'm still a princess because my father's... stuck? Yeah, that's it. In a... parallel dimension... Oh, that's rich. Where he has no royal authority. So I don't have to make any hard choices or take any responsibility because he still technically is king and I just have to smile and wear pretty dresses. Politics! 
this is fun! So, seeing how there's only four people and no guards in the palace, I guess we're not surprised that it's being taken over. But luckily, a magical element informs our heroes that a lone warrior is being summoned to help them. A magical element simply known as the Power Glove. The legend of Videoland foretells of a young warrior. He is Captain N, the Game Master. Behold, the ultimate warp zone. It's like the power glove of the freaking gods. Where the hell would they get such a magical entity? I love the power glove. It's so bad. Look it, darling. So the power glove goes into the real world, or at least what we consider the real world in the 80s, as a young gamer named Kevin gets sucked into the realms of Videoland. By the way, do you know what the fuck this is? It's only on the screen for a second, but they always showed it in the opening. I can never tell if that's something sucking him in, or if that is him being sucked in. Is that what happens when you cross dimensions? You become the CG version of Kermit the Frog and Max Hedrum? It's not easy being g g g green So Kevin, and his little dog too, are transported to the Palace of Power, where Lana and the others are waiting. Simon Belmont? Kid Icarus? Mega Man? Wow! You look nothing like your original designs! The Ultimate Warp Zone brought you here. You mean like Warp Zone 4 and Super Mario Brothers? No, that game is much cooler. The legend foretold of your coming to help restore freedom to our world. That's why it gave you that super power pad and zapper. Only $19.95, available at most video game outlets. Castlevania, Kid Icarus, Mega Man, or whatever the hell this chick was in are also available. Thus is the plot to Captain N, our five heroes trying to stop the evil mother brain from taking over the Palace of Power. Captain N, the Game Master. By the way, I know this is really immature, but have you ever listened to the announcer say that title without actually reading it? It sounds different. Listen. Captain N, the Game Master. Doesn't it sound like that? I mean, I know I just made a gay joke, but that's what it sounds like. Wouldn't the more appropriate title be Captain N, the sexually confused yet physically and emotionally open-minded master? So, you know, aside from lame lines, nonsensical stories, and completely misunderstood character development, what specifically is wrong with this show? Well, how about the fact that nothing in this world is consistent? For example, we clearly see that pretty much any time he wants, Kevin can use his Nintendo pad to pause reality. Well, why the hell doesn't he just do that all the time? Wouldn't that make everything a lot easier? I mean, how come he never confronts Mother Brain like this? Prepare to meet your match, Captain Ed. <laughs> I'm awesome. Captain Ed, the Game Master. Or how about these warp zones that they keep using? They can apparently jump from world to world whenever they want, so why don't they just warp to the inside of the enemy's room and zap them? In fact, they do that a few times! It seems so easy! Except they don't bring any guards or armies, they just use the eggplant guy who shits out some vegetables! I'm just an incompetent vegetable. Again, why doesn't Kevin just use the warp zone to shoot Mother Brain when she's in the middle of a hammy speech? I'm not only the most beautiful brain in the world, I'm the commander! I'm awesome. Captain N, the Game Master. But no, there's always some lame-ass excuse as to why he can't just blast her. Into the warp zone! It's too dangerous to finish her off! We're contractually obligated to keep stalling for three more seasons! There's also things that were never in the games that they just flat out made up. Like, did you know that Simon Belmont's whip literally has a mind of its own? I'm not going to do anything, but my whip is going to whoop you. Ah! Look out! Now his sexual preference, I can't speak for. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, it's pretty easy to make fun of this guy. Especially when you see how he's defeated half of the time. A bag. The greatest vampire hunter in the world is defeated by a bag. This guy couldn't defeat Count Chocula. Of course. Also, isn't Kevin's mother worried about him? I mean, there's gotta be missing posters all throughout the neighborhood. Wouldn't you be worried sick? In fact, in the first episode, he actually has a chance to go back, but decides not to. That's a good lesson for the kids, right? If it comes down to video games or your family, always pick the fucking video games. Kevin, better not be playing that foolish game. You have homework to do. And don't forget to take out the trash. 
On second thought, I guess I could stay just a little while longer. Hmm, life-threatening situations of certain doom or taking out the trash? Have fun filing those police reports, Mom! That and the animation is just horrible. And I mean horrible. Like, look at the expression on Simon's face here. Did he just give himself a full frontal lobotomy? No one enters Castle Iron Spire! But we're prepared to I don't accept credit cards! <laughs> and look at this! They actually forgot to put in the background! Are you fucking serious? And trust me, this isn't like any kind of artistic license here. They're in the middle of the bayou. There is no reason it should look like this. And I understand if they did it maybe once by accident, but I counted it. They do it seven times. Seven? That's right, seven. Well, yes, but I'm seven. I guess they could have, oh, I don't know, watched this before they sent it out to air? I mean, I do know it requires actually sitting through an entire episode, and Laura knows they're hard enough to watch, but my thought is, that would sort of be required. I mean, seriously, what moron would just have a plain white background the whole entire time? He'd be a fucking idiot. And how about these rockin' dance moves that the heroes have? Oh, I like this. Wow, if you thought white people dancing was bad, try animated white people dancing. That's right, princess. Move that one leg. Pull off the geriatric drowning look. <laughs> 